May favorites. Uh, let's just jump right in because I have a lot of products to show you and I'm pretty excited about all of them. Let's start off with the creepy stuff first. Well, not necessarily creepy for you, but maybe for the people around you. <laughs> the very first thing is a mask that I received in my pink soul box last month. And this is the Elisa Vecca Milky Piggy Carbonated Bubble Clay Mask. And you're gonna have to excuse the demo picture that I'm gonna insert, but I was teasing my, um, my best friend Sam when I was putting it on. It's basically a clay mask, which clay masks are to remove impurities from your skin or in your pores, um, but it's in a carbonated form. So you apply it to your skin, it's a light gray color, and then it sort of bubbles up and it literally creates a layer, like a one inch layer of bubbles on your skin. And then you kind of pop them down and then you know rub it into your skin and you can let them rise again or you could just rinse it off. It's not one of those masks that's going to, it's not one of those clay masks that dries down into a hard, stiff, you know, muddy type texture on your skin. But if you do apply a really, really, really thin layer, it actually does dry, which I don't like it when it does that because it's extremely hard to remove. So you wanna make sure you apply a generous layer and you wanna avoid your eye area and your nose area, otherwise, you're gonna have some issues breathing. The second creepy, I'm gonna scare my children in thing is this product. And this was actually recommended to me by one of my lovely subscribers. Um, she's like, Danny, have you ever tried a silicone mask? And I was like, uh, no, I've tried all kinds of sheet masks, but what are you talking about? She's like, they're these silicone masks that you apply over your sheet mask and what it does is it allows for the serum or the essence in the mask to penetrate deeper into your skin. What it also does is that it keeps it moisturized or wet or hydrated for a lot longer. So it's a really, really cool trick. So thank you so much for that recommendation. You know I jumped on it right away. Now moving on to what's on my eyes. This is actually a palette that I found on accident via Instagram. I saw some swatches of this blue eyeshadow and I was like, I need that blue eyeshadow in my life. I even went into my collection and my best friend Sam is witness to this. I went into my collection and I swatched every single blue eyeshadow that I had in my collection to see if I had anything similar to this one right here, and I didn't. So I was like, yeah, I need that palette in my life. I'm actually wearing all the colors. Uh, all the colors on my eyes are what, what are in this palette. So I'm wearing Morocco as my transition shade. I'm wearing Jezebel in the crease and I'm wearing uh, Nairobi on the lid. It's such a beautiful palette. It's one of those palettes that's really pigmented, but it's not dusty. Have you guys ever tried a palette that is so rich in pigment, but it's so rich in pigment that it's creamy and powdery? This one is not. I mean, you dip your brush and it will almost stain your brush. It's so rich in pigment. The other thing on my eyes is this mascara, and you guys know, I mentioned it in my last month's favorites, but I'm sorry, I cannot help myself. I needed to mention it again. This mascara is amazing. This is the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. It is a superhero mascara. It looks like I'm wearing false lashes today, and I'm not, you guys. This is just two layers of mascara, two coats. Two coats of mascara, I need to stop doing this. <laughs> two coats of mascara, and look at the results it gives you. I've been trying it for more than a month, yeah, more than a month because it was in my last month's favorites and it still hasn't dried out. I know some of you had that um, observation. You said, I love that mascara, but it dried out on me right away and you know, I don't feel like I get enough use out of it. Mine hasn't dried out and it's still going strong and it's still giving me false looking lashes. Another eye product is the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Mad Max Brown. Have you guys ever thought about using a brown liquid liner? I feel like it's something that we generally overlook. We automatically reach for the black or the crazy colors, but we kind of forget about the brown. A brown eyeliner is really good for people with really, really, really fair skin or really, really light blonde hair, almost like a corn silk type blonde hair. But it's also a really good option when you want the impact of a wing liner, but you don't want it to be black that's going to overshadow 
the look of your eyeshadow or maybe your complexion that day or the color of your lips you don't want it to compete then brown is your way to go it's definitely a color of liquid liner that I feel like we overlook and you should definitely keep an eye out for I was wearing this um, eyeliner in a look that I've done recently I'll insert a picture if I can find one and you can tell it still gives the impact of the eyeliner look but it doesn't compete with anything else that's going on with your makeup look that day now two lip products that I just want to do a quick hey to that I rediscovered this month or I discovered one and rediscovered the other the discovery was the Glossier Rose Balm.com. You guys have heard me talk about the Balm.com already. It's a just like an emollient lip product that you could also apply to like let's say your really dry elbows, dry hands, maybe I don't know your ankles, anywhere that you have really dry skin. It's a really great emollient product. But uh, Glossier recently launched it in three different shades. There's the rose, the light pink, there's a mint, and there is a cherry. Um, but you guys know how I feel about rose products, and this definitely is comparable to um, By Terry's Bone de Rose, which is a $60 lip balm. Comparable, but not the same, but I really, really like it. So if you're looking for like a rose lip balm on a budget, this is a really good option. Plus I think Glossier always has um, discount codes. And then my rediscovery is my YSL uh, tint and oil in number eight. I sort of had these guys on the back burner because I fell in love with the Lancome Juicy Shakers and I wouldn't put them down. But the other day that I was trying out a uh, YSL mascara, I was like, well, I might as well use a YSL lip color too. And I busted out my tint and oil and I was like, I'm sorry, I should never abandon you like that. You know, it's a great product. I mean, I love my juicy shakers, but this is definitely a great product. And now let's talk about complexion products. There have been a lot of favorites of complexion products for me this month. It's the summer and when it comes down to summertime, I feel like your complexion and your lips are the way to go. You want a really, really sheer, bright, happy popsicle lip and you want beautiful, glowy skin. So one of my favorite, favorite, favorite new discoveries is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. This is like a serum foundation Foundation. It's from Tarte. I'm so ashamed to say that I bought this more than three months ago and I barely opened it a few weeks ago. It was one of those foundations where it was love upon first bump of the beauty blender. I took it out, I patted it onto my skin, and then I went in with the bump and I was like, why has this been sitting in a drawer for so long and without me using it? I'm in the shade Light Sand. This is one of those really, really lightweight, I don't feel like I'm wearing anything, full coverage foundations. So it's one of those foundations that's going to be really high in water and very, very, very high in pigment. So you're not going to feel like you're wearing it, but it's going to completely give you full coverage. But it's one of those foundations that you really want to pick your primer carefully because if you pick a primer that doesn't play nicely, you might end up blaming the foundation when it's really just a primer that doesn't really go well with it. A primer that I have a little bit of trouble with when I use this foundation is the um, Hourglass uh, Veil Mineral Primer. They work well together if you're going to wear it for just a few hours, but if you're going to wear it for an extended period of time, like all day, they really do not go well at all. Then, um, I really love this powder from 100% Pure. You guys saw me talk about it when I reviewed the brand. I love this powder. This is one of those powders that you could wear as like a light foundation type. Like when you're on the run, when you're in a hurry and you just want to put on a little bit of powder to kind of even out your skin tone, it's great for that. It's also great for setting but it's also a really buildable powder. So if you want a full coverage uh, powder foundation look, it's going to give you that as well. Along with 100% Pure, their blush in Pretty Naked, you guys can see I've really gone to town on this powder and I haven't had it for very long. I did a comprehensive review of the brand. I'll link that video in the description box below. But of the product standouts, this blush the blushes in general are must-haves, but this blush, Pretty Naked, is awesome. Speaking of blushes, the one that I'm wearing today was another one of those products that was like love on first application. This is Becca's um, 
Luminous Blush in Tiger Lily. And I was fortunate enough to receive all six colors, and I was a little bit nervous because some of the colors look really, really sparkly or shimmery, but once you apply them, you guys, Becca has such a way with the formula of their Luminous products that it's one of those products that you really can't just overdo. You know what I mean? Like, if you overdo it, you're going to notice the pigment. It's going to be bright orange on the cheeks. But it's never going to be like, oh my god, it's way too sparkly. So I feel like the formula of these blushes would be really great for even people with um, more mature skin or even dry skin. It's going to give you a really beautiful, subtle glow. Uh, I don't know. I'm totally in love. I keep trying them in hopes that I will find one I don't like. But so far, I've tried three of the six, and I really, really like them. In fact, last month, I talked about um, Camellia, the pink one. Like, it's like a cotton candy pink. I thought that one was going to look atrocious on me, which is why I decided to try it first. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I have bad news for you. <laughs> They're all great so far. Then a highlighter that I totally discovered on accident and on impulse, when I was at Ulta, uh, purchasing Juice Beauty products, I was on the way out and it kind of like stopped because they had this little display at the door with all the Laura Geller highlights. I didn't know this and I don't know what rock I've been living under, but Laura Geller has more highlights in this style than just the cold one. <laughs> Did you guys know that? <laughs> you guys know how everyone loves Laura Geller Gilded Honey? Like, oh my god, Gilded Honey, it's life-changing. Personally, I tried it, and I like it, but I don't think that it compares to Whisper of Guilt, um, what's the one from Estee Lauder Heat Wave? I don't think it's the same at all. Um, so I was on the way out, and apparently they have like four or five of these types of highlight shades. Um, and I just, I made the mistake to swatch it. Like, I made that horrible, horrible mistake to stop with my bag. I had already paid to swatch it, and it's just... Like, can we talk about this? It's so pretty. I know I already showed you guys a swatch, but look at that. It's a pink highlighter. It's called Charming Pink. And I know they have... Well, now I know that they have the gold, and they have this pink one, and then they have one called Slippers, Ballerina Slippers, something like that. There's several in the line. But this one, for some reason, like the formula is really soft. It's almost reminiscent of um, Becca highlighters. So I have to come home with me. And my very last favorite is this nail polish from OPI. So many of you have been asking about it. This is from their Infinite Shine line. These are a little bit more expensive than the regular OPI polishes. These are $12 instead of $10. And this is in the shade Olive for Green. I live for green, but Olive for Green. It's just a really beautiful, like, uh, olive green or like an army green. Um, I had to buy mine on eBay. And I just did a general search for olive green beauty on the internet, and this came out. And apparently this was limited edition or it's from a previous collection because you really can't find it anywhere. I know only some Sally's have it now, and I got mine on eBay for about $7. It's such a beautiful green shade. I know you don't really think like, oh, I want an olive green nail polish. You don't really think about that, but once you apply it, you're like, why didn't I think about that? I'm still on the fence on the formula of the Infinite Shine range, the ones with the shiny cap. It's not a horrible formula, but you guys know when you have your favorites and your preferences when it comes to formula types, I'm still on the fence. It's not something that would stop me from ever buying another OPI Shine, but it's definitely not one of the best formulas that I've tried. So that is it for my monthly favorites. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Like always, I will list and link all of these products in the description box below. I really hope you guys had a fantastic May. June is here and we are going to make the most of it. Can you guys believe we are halfway through the year? That is insane. I swear, like, time has no prisoners. Like, they just, it, time just goes. Regardless of if we're ready or not, it keeps moving. And I feel like this is one of the fastest years that I have ever lived through. Let me know what some of your favorites are in the comment section below. And like always, if you found this video useful, entertaining, or 